Hello everybody, I'm Pastor Steve and uh, I want to start out the, the message today by, by thanking you all. I think most of you know that uh, this past week has been uh, Dana and I's week to experience COVID for the first time since the pandemic and, uh, and luckily it's been pretty much like the flu for us and, uh, and we're both doing, doing much better. So, uh, but I do know that there were many, many, many of you out there that were lifting, lifting us up in prayer and, and, and all the well wishes and folks checking in on us. Um, it, it's just been very humbling. We, we are truly blessed to have such a wonderful circle of friends and folks out there that, that care about us. So, so thank you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your well wishes and, and know that, that we are recovering. Uh, we're doing doing pretty well by and large, and uh, it won't be long. We'll be back to 100%. So, so thank you. Today's message, we're going to be reading from the, the book of Galatians. And uh, we're going to be in chapter 5, and I'm going to read verse 1. And then I'm going to jump ahead to verses 16 through 26. <clears throat> It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. So I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have suffered the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, or envying each other. And that is the Word of God for the people of God. Pray with me, please. Father in heaven, may the words from my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts that are, that are gathered together here, may they not only be acceptable, but may they be pleasing to you, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. And our sermon title for today is Walking with God. Noah. I've always liked the name Noah. And when you hear the name Noah as Christians, I suppose most of us might think, hmm, I wonder if I've got enough flood insurance. Well, no doubt the Great Flood does appear to be Noah's big claim to fame, but, but looking deeper, that name has so much more meaning. This is how the Bible describes Noah. Among the people of his time, he walked with God. That's what I want to do. How about you? I want to walk with God. 
among the people of my time, I want to walk with God. We're told that the people during Noah's time were corrupt and full of violence. Hmm, sound familiar? Noah was really, really going against the grain of the world by walking with God, but, but it sure was well worth it. In this day and age, we too are going against the grain if we're walking with God. Funny, things just don't change much. Human nature remains the same. But if we do walk with God, well, just like it was well worth it for Noah, it'll be well worth it for us and, and for those around us as well. So how do we go about walking with God? In verse 25 of our scripture reading for today, Paul tells us, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit, which can also be translated as, let us walk in line with the Spirit. But I suppose that we must understand what it means to live by the Spirit of God before we can begin to unravel what it means to, to walk in line with the Spirit of God or, or keep in step with the Spirit of God. Every one of us, every believer, has a, a sort of civil war going on inside of us. It's a continuing battle, a war between our fallen nature and the Holy Spirit who has moved in and taken up residence within our hearts. It's a battle between our old nature and our new nature. It's a battle between what our sinful nature desires and, and what our new nature desires too. As far back as I can remember, a part of me wanted to walk with God, to be the person God wanted me to be, to be the person I knew Deep down inside, I could be and was created to be, but I couldn't figure out how to go about doing it because I was being controlled by another part of me that was at complete odds with walking with God. I was very much a part of this world. Just about everything I was involved in, whether it be in thought or deed, was in direct opposition to the way of God. I was in slavery to sin, and a very big part of me enjoyed that slavery. But at the same time, another big part of me wanted to be free from that slavery and free to do what is right. But how could I make myself free? Well, I couldn't make myself free, but I could choose to be free. During my early adult years, I met this pastor who asked me if I was a Christian. I have to admit that I was more than a little surprised by his question, but, but my answer was the obligatory yes. After all, I had gone to church most of my life. In fact, I was standing in a church at the time, and, and I did believe in God. So I was very intrigued by the question. So much so, I wanted to know more about why he would ask me such a question in the first place. So this wanting to know more led to him and I becoming very good friends. But it didn't take long for me to figure out what his definition of, of what a Christian was and my definition of what a Christian was, well, they were completely different. He was walking with God. It was very evident in the way he talked and in the way he treated other people, where his priorities were. And, and most of all, in, in the way he lived his life. Over time, I came to see that it was truly possible not only to believe in God and, and want to walk with him, <clears throat> excuse me, but it could actually be done. Wow! I wrestled with that newfound epiphany for a while. Is this actually possible? And, and more importantly, do I really want to do it? Do I really want to do it enough to actually do it? Well, finally I made the decision. I gave my life to God. I repented of my sinful desires and acts, and I asked Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior. And at once, I knew that I'd become a new person. 
I felt that great burden of slavery to sin just fall away, and, and I was free at last to walk with the one who loves me and wants only what is best for me. This was the beginning of my walk with God, and, and my life has never been the same since. I wouldn't trade my walk with God for all the money in the world. I wouldn't trade it for anything. It is the most important part of my entire life. It is the central meaning of my existence, and the longer I walk, the more grateful I am for the privilege. Also, the longer I walk, the, the fruit of the Spirit becomes more and more part of my nature and, and ingrained into, into who I am, hopefully. You can do this too, and, and many of you are probably already doing this way better than I ever can. For we are called as Christians to be conformed to the likeness and to have the mind of Christ. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Now this is a daily crucifixion because sin does try and, and resurrect itself over and over and over again as the tempter. Satan tries his best to entice and lead astray the children of God. So we are to keep in step with the Spirit. We are to be aware of the Spirit's leading and direction. This comes through prayer and listening to God's still, small voice. It also comes through studying God's Word, which shed light on and dispels the darkness. We are told in Hebrews chapter 4 that the Word of God is living and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of Him to whom we must give account. If we don't know God's Word, well, it'll be extremely difficult for us to keep in step with God. God's Word is a, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. If we do not know God's Word, we're going to stumble around in the darkness and get lost and ultimately die. That's why it is imperative for all who desire to walk with God to read His Word. Meditate on His Word day and night. Not just knowing what it says, but, but actually putting it into practice. Are we doing this? Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitudes in your hearts to God, Paul tells us in Colossians chapter 3, the words of the Lord are flawless, we're told in Psalm 12. They are sweeter than honey. They give understanding to the simple. They are true. They are eternal, declares the writer of Psalm 119. To walk with God hand in hand is to know His Word, to love His Word, and to put His Word into action, no matter where we are, or no matter who we're with, at all times, in all situations. In the Old Testament, the prophet Micah, in chapter 6, tells us that God has shown us what is good. And what does the Lord require of you, Micah asks in verse 8? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Do we act justly? Do we treat each other with kindness, compassion, and love, even when we may not necessarily agree with each other? And let's be honest here. We don't always agree on everything, do we? God speaks through the prophet Isaiah and tells us, Learn to do right. Seek justice. Encourage the oppressed. Defend the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. In other words, walking with God involves lifting up those who are down and out. Taking the time to help those who need our help. To be caring for the people who who the world is cast out as being disposable. 
loving those whom the world deems unlovable, forgiving those that the world condemns, and loving each other no matter what. Are we doing this? Are we allowing the downtrodden to see Christ through us? And as a result, being vessels through whom their chains of oppression can be forever broken? We are to love mercy. Has Christ not been merciful unto us? We who, because we are sinners, deserve the death penalty, but have been forgiven, are to have mercy on our fellow human beings. Whether they're rich or poor, male or female, black or white, and we know that the list can go and, and does go on and on and on. Do we love mercy? Are we willing to die in order to forgive? Are we willing to die to self and live for Christ in order to forgive? Blessed are the merciful. Those are some of the first words Jesus taught in his ministry. James, the brother of Jesus, tells us, Judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Let us remember this, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we have too often been fairly portrayed by the world as, as being more judgmental than merciful. Great harm has been done and and is done to the gospel of Jesus Christ when, when those of us who claim to walk with him, well, we do not walk humbly. Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. To say the very least, God has chosen very ordinary people to be his disciples, to learn from him, to walk with him, and he is able to do extraordinary things through them. Do you want to walk with God? If so, live by the Spirit and you will learn to love the way God loves. You'll experience the kind of joy that nothing but God can produce. You will inherit peace, which transcends all understanding, no matter what the outside situation. And patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, which the world knows nothing about. I want to walk like that. How about you? Let us pray. Almighty God, we praise you and thank you as we stand in awe of a God who wants to walk with those he has created. We ask that your Holy Spirit live inside our hearts and, and control our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. We pray that we will keep in step with you. We pray that we will be faithful just as you are faithful. For your sake we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's our scripture and our message for this week. Um, I hope there's something in there for you. Every, every word of scripture we read, there's something there for us. And it's, it's different every time we read it. So I encourage you, spend time in your Bible. Meditate on the Word, and uh, as we're doing that, our walk with, with God just, it's amazing, is it not? I just don't know any other, any other way to say it, but uh, I hope you're all well. I can't wait to see you all again in person. Uh, 
I miss you when I can't, and this week has really shown me um, how much I miss you all. So stay connected with each other. That is tremendously important. Uh, but more importantly than that, stay connected with God. Bye for now, and uh, I'll see you all soon.